Now, if you saw my original review, you'll know I'm a big fan of Google's fresh new Pixel 6 flagship smartphone, which may not be the best smartphone around when it comes to sheer grunt, but it's certainly one of the most satisfying pocket-friendly experiences around, at least that doesn't involve self-abuse and or possible jail time. But if you want near demand the ultimate Pixel experience, you will have to stump up a couple hundred quid more for this here Pro model. It's bigger, it's better, in some ways at least, and it's still got that wide boy camera bump and it definitely still makes my PP pee tingle with delight. Now, I've been testing the Pixel 6 Pro for a full month now. I've actually had my SIM slapped in there full time for the last couple of weeks. I've been giving it a really thorough going over. So here is my full in-depth Pixel 6 Pro review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, as a bit of a short arse with teeny weeny hamster hands, I'm more attracted to smaller phones like the original Pixel 6 rather than 6.7 inch beasts like this here Pixel 6 Pro. This full-on heifer may have skinnier bezels than its sibling and not actually weigh much more to boost either, but it is still a proper two-hander. That said, having also recently used the obscene shiny house brick that is the iPhone 13 Pro Max, well suddenly the Pixel 6 Pro doesn't seem quite so ridiculous. Besides obviously being bigger than the Pixel 6, the Pro model also sports a polished alloy frame and boosts the durability with some shatter-resistant Gorilla Glass Victors slathered across the back end. And what a back end it is as well, certainly the kind that lingers a long time in the memory with that unique camera bump, which isn't so much of a bump, more of a wodge. Still, I do like Google's design, which is attractively symmetrical and suitably shiny. You will find that even a light bit of fondling does quickly coat the back of the Pixel 6 Pro in all kinds of smudgy grease, but thankfully this bright white finish does a pretty good job of masking all of that greasy crud. Otherwise, you can also grab the Pixel 6 Pro in stormy black or sort of sunny, which is another kind of bright, happy effort, which makes me kind of puke in my mouth a bit every time I see it. Sort of sunny. Now, after a month of serious testing, that Gorilla Glass Victor's coating on the back is still free of scuffs, but the display has been scarred with some light scratching. So I would highly recommend slapping some form of screen protector on that thing to protect your premium, very expensive, shiny new toy. The good news is, no sweat whatsoever if you do uh, want to rock the Pixel 6 Pro by the pool or, you know, in a bathtub, something like that, because it's fully IP68 water and dust resistant. Now, if you have already seen my Pixel 6 review, you'll already know I'm a bit of a fan of Android 12. On the moist pants scale, we're talking full-on tropical showers here. The new theme and tools and those aesthetical tweaks help to freshen up the UI, while the new privacy and security features offer a proper bit of peace of mind. And then there's the tools that Google finally got around to chucking in, like a dedicated game and dashboard and a proper one-handed mode. Hip hip, huzzah. Here on the Pixel 6 Pro, you've basically got the exact same software experience as on the original Pixel 6. So if you want an in-depth look at some of those great new features, the new UI and everything, definitely go check out my full Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro tips and tricks guide, which is live right now. That covers all the stuff I was just banging on about and more besides. And as you might expect from a dedicated Google blow, you get plenty of dedicated software support as well, up to five years at least guaranteed. So if you're in it for the long haul, no worries there. Now, one issue that I had with the original Pixel 6 was the less than fantastic optical fingerprint sensor, which is one of the weakest that I've used in recent times. And sadly, it's the same ball ache here on the Pro model as well. Frankly, it is very uncooperative. Sometimes it takes a couple of pokes to recognize you, even when your pans are perfectly clean and dry. And if they are moist or grubby, then frankly, good f***ing luck. And of course, that wouldn't be quite so much of an issue if we actually had face unlock support here on the Pixel. But once again, Android does not support that shit is not one bit. So much like on Apple's iPhones, I found myself inserting my pin more often than I would hope to ever do on a modern smartphone. On the storage front as well, another minor grumble there, the fact that you've got no micro SD memory card support to expand that storage, but at least you do get 128 gig minimum, otherwise you can double that to 256 if you like, and it is of course UFS 3.1, so nice and nippy. It's especially good when you're loading massive games like Genshin Impact, stuff like that. Now, one of the benefits of grabbing this here Pro model over the standard Pixel 6 is that bigger, sharper screen. It is a 6.7 inch OLED display that will have your peepers creaming, if peepers are actually capable of creaming, that is, and that's actually quite a horrible image, so moving on. Thanks to the supremely crisp Quad HD Plus resolution and bright, punchy color output. HDR streaming is supported, conjuring up stunning natural visuals, otherwise anime fans should definitely be satisfied with that lush output. 
As for the brightness levels, well, they thankfully scale all the way from super dim for comfortable late night viewing all the way up to, ooh, ow, my retinas are actually on fire. Supremely bright output for when you're battling against really strong external light. And likewise, the refresh rate also has a much stronger range compared with the original Pixel 6 as well, dropping as low as 10 hertz when absolutely now it is happening on screen to preserve power and boost it all the way up to 120 hertz for your supported content. And that, besides the size and the resolution of the display, is the main benefit of grabbing the Pro over the standard Pixel 6. I'm also a fan of the Pixel 6 Pro's stereo speakers, which pack a perfectly respectable punch. That audio does not distort on higher volumes, and on the higher volume it is powerful enough to cut through plenty of background bullshit, while the Bluetooth 5.2 chops are also perfect for wireless streaming. I didn't experience any kind of judders or shaky connection shenanigans even when I was prancing my way through merry old London town at kicking out time. It's just a damn shame that once again there's absolutely subtle headphone jack action on here just like with most of the pricey flagship smartphones. It's just really irritating that nobody else is following in Sony's footsteps and bringing back that 3.5mm jack. Now performance on the Pixel 6 Pro admittedly may not be quite as beefy as on some rivals like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra for instance. But I did find that everyday play was supremely smooth here on the Google Pixel 6 Pro helped along admirably by the 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM. That Tensor chipset had all of my apps running perfectly even when I was nipping between quite a few in quick succession while gaming is a more pleasurable experience here versus the standard Pixel 6. While the dinkier blower tended to heat up under Genshin Impact related duress, this Pro can handle that bonkers anime shenanigans with a metaphorical spring in its step. And yeah, you've even got a game and dashboard now so you can block notifications, capture your finest online moments. And yes, it is quite a basic game and mode compared with a lot of rivals. Just look at what Sony's doing not on its Xperia flagships, for instance, the sheer volume of features that thing manages to pack in. Uh, considering it's a fresh new game and feature as well, definitely very impressive indeed. But here's hoping that that will get upgraded with all kinds of great new tools really, really soon. And of course, the Tensor chipset also packs in support for sub-6 5G here in the UK as well. So you've got strong connectivity there. You've also got a tasty bit of Wi-Fi 6E action. And of course, an industry-leading security partition for safely encrypting and storing your most private of privates. And this Pro model even packs in support for ultra-wideband comstech as well, something not found in the original Pixel 6. So you've got full support for that precision tracking for shiz like tires. Now let's talk battery life which on the Pixel 6 series has proven strangely controversial when it really shouldn't have. After my original Pixel 6 review as I absolutely adored the battery life and I still do, I had a few comments saying oh that's really really strange because we've heard the battery life is absolutely crud. When I did a bit of digging it appears that one prominent uh, US based YouTuber has mourned that the battery life was a bit crap on the Pixel 6. I was really confused by this because I'd had the exact opposite experience. So I spoke with all of my UK tech nerd journal family who were just as confused as me because they'd had the same experience. They thought the battery life was brilliant. Now I obviously can't comment on this other guy's experiences with the Pixel 6 or the Pixel 6 Pro. All I can say is that here on the Pixel 6 Pro I found the battery life was fantastic. Even at the longest most arduous days I would have the screen on for about seven or eight hours. I'd use it as a sat nav for an hour or two. I'd have plenty of play with that camera, shooting photos and video as well. A good bit of gaming on the side, some video streaming, lots of music and podcast streaming in the background as well. And by the time I finally crumpled up onto my mattress, shriveled up under my duvet, I still had, generally have like 15 to 20% battery life left on this thing. And if you took it easy, you could probably get two full days out of a single charge. If you do want to mourn about something, you can mourn about the fact that you don't actually get an adapter bundled in the box and it tops off at 30 watts which isn't particularly nippy compared with a lot of uh, even quite budgety uh, smartphones these days. Although you do at least have support for wireless charging if you have another chi pad or stand knocking about the place you've got reverse wireless charging. You've also got adaptive charging as well which seems to work uh, very nicely indeed here on the Pixel 6 Pro. Basically learns your charging habits and makes sure it just trickle charges up until the point where you normally spring out of bed. Uh, that should hopefully help to prevent long-term damage. Of course, the Pixel feature that's been getting the most attention outside of that battery is the camera tech. And here on the Pro, you get the same 50 megapixel primary camera sensor as the Pixel 6, complete with optical image stabilization. And it is once again a proper cracker, especially if you take a lot of shots of family, friends, and other things with faces. Skin tones and other hues are accurately captured in pretty much any conditions indoors or out, while the portrait mode again does a solid job nine times out of 10. 
When things do get dim, however, the Pixel 6 Pro can struggle with motion, and while the 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter works well in good light, this too starts to stumble when conditions get dark. For video, you can shoot 4K resolution footage with the same impressive color accuracy, as well as crisp audio capture and the option of swapping between those three main lenses as you record. That's right, I said three lenses because you've got a third lens here on the Pixel 6 Pro, which is the big camera upgrade versus the standard Pixel 6. And this is a 48 megapixel telephoto snapper, which serves up a four times optical zoom or 20 times maximum zoom with digital cropping. And while the Pixel 6 Pro is no S21 Ultra in this regard, this lens is ideal for getting closer to kids and cats at play without actually disturbing them, returning fine looking pics up to around the 10 times zoom mark. Up front on the Pixel 6 Pro you have an 11.1 megapixel selfie snapper which boasts a slightly wider view and angle than the original Pixel 6, but it does serve up very similar pics. As long as the lighting is decent your selfies will be fine, but in softer light you'll get a lot of grain and the Pro really starts to properly struggle. And while you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage here on the Pixel 6 Pro with a uh, slightly more zoomed in uh, affair if, if you like, let's, let's definitely never do that. Again, uh, I found the footage was merely fine. Again, if you're trying to shoot indoors, it'll be a bit grainy and not particularly uh, accurate colours or any of that stuff. I, I do vaguely look this pale, but it's not quite 100% right. And the pixels are, as usual, quite light on bonus camera features, but the Magic Eraser tool does a great job of wiping out any fellow humans and other background clutter to clean up your pics. Definitely well worth checking out, however I would just stay clear of the freshly motion mode which frankly is just a bit of a balky gimmicky thing that more often than not just doesn't really work very well. Anyhow that's a brief summary of the Pixel 6 Pro's camera tech but if you want a more in-depth look at the hardware and the software as well then definitely go check out my full Pixel 6 Pro camera review. I've also compared it side by side with the original Pixel 6 to see what the difference is. And now right there's my full final frank review of the Google Pixel 6 Pro after I've been using it for uh, a full month. I actually had my sim in there for a couple of weeks as my full-time smartphone. I've got to say I really enjoyed using it got on with it very well indeed. It's certainly expensive, it's very pricey indeed, but it is a solid all-round experience. There are very few flaws to speak of here, certainly compared with the uh, the new iPhones, that's for damn sure, outside of the usual grumbles like, you know, no headphone jack, no expandable storage, yada yada. If you are still undecided whether you should get the Pixel 6 Pro or just the standard Pixel 6, well I have done a full side-by-side -side comparison with them both as well to show you exactly how they stack up against one another. But I'd say, long story short, like if you want that more flexible camera tech, if you're going to be doing a lot of gaming, and if you prefer your handsets to be absolutely friggin whopping huge then the pixel 6 pro is a worthy upgrade otherwise to be perfectly honest i'd be i'd be very happy just with the standard pixel 6 which is a bit more compact which is what i prefer and it's a hell of a lot cheaper as well so have you been uh, rocking the pixel 6 pro in your pants slash bag it'd be great to hear from you down in the comments below and please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week and yeah that's about it love you